Hello, BookTube, and welcome back to our 2024 read-along of Frank Herbert's masterpiece, Dune. We are reading this chapter by chapter. The, the little segments of the book don't have numbers or chapter names, but they are, they are essentially chapters. Uh, it, on our way to the end of the thing, there are three sections of this book, three large narrative sections, and then there is a fourth section that is appendices at the end of the thing, and we'll be dealing with them as well. Uh, but if I'm going to be taking you through this chapter by chapter, it'd be nice if I knew what the heck I was talking about. I said yesterday that uh, yesterday's chapter was the last one in the middle segment of the book, and it's not. Today's is. <laughs> so, uh, so just to rewind and erase all that, it was the penultimate chapter. We are still uh, in this final part of the sec The middle section of the book is called Muad'Dib, and in this final section we are still with Paul Atreides, the teenage heir to the, the uh, destroyed House Atreides, and his mother, Jessica, who was the consort of Duke Leto Atreides, the slain leader of House Atreides, but not his duchess. She is an adept of the secret all-female society of the Bene Gesserit. Uh, they have a weird reputation in the, the, the future galactic imperium that is the setting for this book. Uh, they are political advisors, they are uh, societal manipulators, they are religious manipulators. They work in very long term, very behind the scenes. And one of the ways that they're able to work very long term is that they also have mystic powers. They go through a ritual. Bene Gesserit adepts go through a ritual to initiate them into what Frank Herbert is seeing as some kind of generational cellular memory that they take a poison into their body their body's chemistry transmutes it some of them some of them die but the ones who succeed their body transmutes this poison and suddenly the gateways of their cellular history open up and they have access to all the memories and all the thoughts and all the experiences of every woman in their genetic heritage going back thousands of generations uh, don't have access to any men, and no male has ever survived this ritual. So the Bene Gesserit not only have this kind of almost collective mind frame, but they also have a, a mission, which is to find or genetically engineer from guiding the breedings of the great houses, uh, something called the Kwisatz Haderach, a man with the powers of a Bene Gesserit adept, a Bene Gesserit uh, initiate. Uh, at the beginning of this book, there's a lot of talk about how the, Jessica was supposed to bear a daughter for Duke Leto, who would then be married with the heir of some other bloodline in the, uh, in the sisterhood's ongoing quest to shape the genetic destiny of the race. Uh, but because the Bene Gesserit have such exquisite control over not only their bodies and their minds, but also their biochemistry... Jessica has a choice in the matter. She can she can decide to to give the Duke a son, and she knows he wants one. So and she loves him, so she does. Uh, we it the so far in this book, we know a little about the Bene Gesserit. We don't learn all that much about them. We know that every house considers them indispensable and also untrustworthy. Uh, we know that a whole bunch of characters who seem perfectly normal otherwise don't have much truck with them, but that we also know that they can be loved, and they can love in return. Uh, a strange thing that I am I might knock the book for not going into greater detail about them using them as a kind of deus ex machina, uh, except that in the, in the books that follow, they are delved into at extreme length, in extreme detail, because they were immediate, an immediate hit with readers. Uh... Jessica has not renounced the sisterhood. She is she's a, a, a full blown adept of the sisterhood, uh, who is being tested to the limit by the fact that she and Paul are now out in the wilderness, fleeing from the pursuing victorious Harkonnen, and allying themselves with the Fremen, an extremely uh, militant and physically capable guerrilla society of desert inhabitants on the planet Dune who are likewise hunted by the Harkonnen and don't trust them at all, and who have been primed by one branch of the Bene Gesserit, who knows how long ago, decades ago, generations ago, uh, to expect a messiah to come from outside the world and maybe to be heralded or accompanied by uh, a 
woman of the Bene Gesserit. Uh, it's very helpful that, that that sister, long gone, primed these people to do, with myths and the beginnings of Aboriginal legends in order to make it easier for them to accept adopting Jessica and Paul into their tribe. And that's what happens. And we've seen that in a few of these latest these latest chapters, the, the, the various ways by which they are adopted and cement their relationships with, uh, with the tribes. But in this final chapter of the section called Muad'Dib, uh, we get a much closer bond than that, because it turns out the Fremen are guided by a reverend mother. The reverend mother is an exalted rank in the Bene Gesserit, but this planet is not there's no sisterhood here. There are no representatives here. As far as Jessica knows, she's the only member of the Bene Gesserit on the planet. Uh, nevertheless, the Fremen have a, a reverend mother. And she's very old and very infirm. And the, the Fremen are about to go on a massive journey. So she knows she can't make that journey. And it's time for her to empty her memories into a younger person, into a younger reverend mother. So Jessica, here in this wild society where everything is strange, where it's nothing like what she grew up, it's nothing like what she learned on, uh, you know, in at Chapter House for the Bene Gesserit, she has to do a version of the ritual that will change someone into a reverend mother, which kills some adepts. So it, there's there's a significant element of danger here, and it's worth. It's worth remembering, I mean, you'll get through this chapter, you'll, you'll have it drummed into your head, that the Bene Gesserit don't do that ritual. They don't derive that ritual from any other source. It, that ritual is made possible by the Spice Melange, which is only found on the planet Dune. <laughs> so it, it may be extracted in a, in a mining operation, it may be shipped off-world at ruinous cost, it may be stored in warehouses, it may be bought by the Bene Gesserit and stored in their own warehouses, it may be refined and parceled out into little bits and pieces here and added into ritual, but it's the same chemical. It's the same substance that allows a, a Reverend Mother, a, a Bene Gesserit adept, to become a Reverend Mother. And that's what Jessica does in this chapter. Uh, that's the, the heart and soul of this chapter is that she becomes the Reverend Mother of the, of this group. The old Reverend Mother dies in the process and opens the doors of her memories and all the stored memories of all the earlier Fremen Reverend Mothers, going back not only decades and decades and centuries, but also from different planets. Following the Fremen as they wander from planet to planet, we get a bombshell revelation in this chapter. Uh, that the Fremen were once a comfortable, fat, complacent people on a far distant world, were hunted in pogroms, kidnapped, and they were seeded on alien worlds, one of which is Seleucia Secundus, the, the emperor's prison planet. So it's entirely possible, if you, if you tease that out, I don't know that it, ever did, that it ever is teased out in any other Dune books, but if you tease that out, then, then you can see that the... the uh, the fights that were happening when the Emperor Sardaukar disguised themselves as Harkonnen warriors in order to help overthrow House Atreides, that those fights in the desert, where Fremen not only killed but also captured some Sardaukar, that, remember how much that astonished through Fairhawa and his men. First, the idea that you killed Sardaukar when that's virtually unheard of, it almost can't be done, but also even more than that, that you not only killed some of them, but you captured some of them alive. Something that had been considered completely impossible. If, if you tease out the details in Jessica's new communal memories, you see that that was Fremen against Fremen. Uh, but uh, that's the smallest detail. The biggest detail, the shock, once the old Fremen Reverend Mother is sharing her thoughts, they're in basically telepathic communication at the height of this water of life ritual. At the height of that ritual, the old Reverend Mother is astonished to realize that Jessica is pregnant, which we have already known. Jessica has already mentioned it herself, that she is pregnant with a daughter that by the Duke, that he, that he they went to, to Arrakis and he died and their house fell and she fled into exile, uh, but pregnant the whole time with, with a daughter of Duke Leto Atreides. Uh, a, a daughter who is a tiny little fetus now. Uh, and when this, the water of life changes happen in Jessica, I mean, she is able to change the water of life. She is able to survive uh, and becomes a reverend mother. 
in the wildest, most uh, indigenous way possible, but it also affects that little fetus. That little fetus, there's no way for her to protect that little fetus from this onslaught of thousands and thousands of adult memories. Hunting, knife fighting, love making, eating, death, all poured into a, a collection of cells that has not even been alive. Not even been alive as an individual being on its own. No chance of developing a personality that can withstand that kind of barrage. Uh, the Reverend Mother, the old Reverend Mother, realizes, well, you should have told us that you were pregnant. It's lucky it's not a male fetus, or this would have killed it. But God help what we've done. And we're going to find out that that is, that is what they've done, is create what the Bene Gesserit have always referred to as an abomination. That will be Paul Atreides' sister. Uh, but that That is the dramatic moment here. You're supposed to, when you're reading it, I think you're supposed to check it off and file it away it's not it's not going to be that important right away uh and that that is the import of this chapter is that that paul drinks the water of life jessica drinks the water of life they they have become now fully initiated into fremen society the fremen uh celebrate the uh, the uh arrival of a new reverend mother in just the way that uh we always celebrated confirmation back in south boston with a massive orgy <laughs> uh, and we leave things there uh, for the end of this book. And now we will move on to the final section of this book, which is called The Prophet. Uh, and uh, it picks up the pace quite a bit, and a lot happens. Of course, we get the rousing conclusion of the book. So we'll follow along chapter by chapter then. Uh, but in the meantime, I'm going to wrap this up. <laughs> but I'll be back. Thank you, Booktube.